thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Melanie Carminati. It is a pleasure. You are a doctor of physical therapy with a specialty in pelvic PT. And also I saw that you have a background in Pilates and dance. And with all of that background, what brought you into wanting to go into the practice of physical therapy? So my story, first of all, thank you, Diana, for having me. I'm very excited for uh, being here, being on Endo TV, and just giving as much information for those people who have endometriosis or people who are interested in pelvic floor physical therapy. So thank you. Thank you. I was a dancer and I was curious about movement and anatomy from a very young age. I actually had a ballet teacher who focused on injury prevention in dance. And when I was young and I was, you know, deciding where in medicine I wanted to end up, I started observing physical therapists and the patient therapist relationship was something so special that really stuck out for me. And the amount of time and the, the care that you can provide was something that was so unique compared to other kinds of professions. So I ended up going um, to uh, school. I was studying dance and physical therapy and doing pre-physical therapy. And um, at that time, I also started studying Pilates. Uh, Pilates is an amazing mind-body movement method. Many dancers use this as cross-training actually. And so I got certified in Pilates while I was preparing for physical therapy graduate school. And then I was in physical therapy graduate school when I had the amazing opportunity to work at Polestar Physical Therapy and Pilates Center, which was in Miami at that time. And there is when I was exposed to myofascial therapist, Carol Davis was there and other pelvic floor physical therapists. And so I was just immersed in this world of holistic, multidisciplinary care. And that really influenced the physical therapist that I am today. And it influenced uh, my business that I have here in Park Slope, Brooklyn. So Inspira Physical Therapy and Pilates is is, um, all of those specialties that I mentioned, pelvic floor physical therapy, complex orthopedics, and Pilates all in one. So that was my uh, journey. I came to pelvic floor physical therapy. I started in uh, Pilates physical therapy. And then one of my mentors who was a pelvic PT said, you know, you need to go for visceral manipulation. I was like, what is this? And I honestly, I went to the first course. I read the book. And when I was preparing um, for the course, I was like, wow, this is something so um, specialized. And really specific with the kinds of manual therapy techniques that they do. And from visceral manipulation, I went into craniosacral therapy and then pelvic floor physical therapy. So it's been, um, it's been a journey. And so we do all of those services at Inspira here in Park Slope, Brooklyn. What, what made you passionate about pelvic floor, especially in the endometriosis arena? Where you yeah. thought, wow, this this really does have an impact in, in a positive way for those with endo. So for pelvic floor physical therapy, and I know many physical therapists will say this, there's a tremendous amount of focus on orthopedic and neurological physical therapy in graduate school. Mm-hmm. And when you're in the field and you're treating the pelvic floor anatomy, the pelvic floor complex, lumbopelvic complex is often the missing piece. So when we're going through treatments, even for complex hip pain, complex back pain, if you're a physical therapist and um, not everyone is a pelvic floor physical therapist, so many times they will refer to a pelvic floor therapist. There's If there's certain signs and symptoms and patients aren't progressing, um, they end up getting referred to pelvic PT. So for me, it was the missing piece, but in addition, I I am a woman and there are so many things that we don't know as women about our own bodies and about our own anatomy. And um, 
prenatal, postnatal. So when I went into pelvic floor physical therapy training, it was like, wow, why don't all women know this? Why don't all women have this information? And so I, I'm an educator as well. So I do uh, run lectures and workshops because I want women uh, or people um, with uteruses to, to have this information about their bodies. So um, for endometriosis, we at Inspira, we're just seeing a lot of cases, people with um, and with training, you know how to notice the different kinds of sy um, symptoms, gastrointestinal symptoms, urinary um, frequency symptoms, pain with intercourse. Mm -hmm. And so we were just seeing it a lot and being there as a provider and being a part of the journey uh, with those patients at, at our office was really humbling because it is it is a challenging um, diagnosis, but it doesn't have to be challenging if you have the right support uh, system and you're going to the right providers and you're seeing the right specialists. Mm -hmm. So, um, where do you so feel like with with PT? Because I've heard of PT being used prior to, let's say, if someone has to have an endo excision surgery. Right. That PT is sometimes used to kind of retrain the muscles and, mm -hmm. um, you know, the pain, uh, parrot, or I should say like the pain reactors or receptors, um, and then also in post so that there's, there's massaging of the scar areas when a doctor or the surgeon say, it, say it's okay. Um, where do you feel that PT really plays an optimal role in in an endo journey? So it can be both pre-operatively, post-operatively, and then some people use it for conservative treatment as well. Mm -hmm. For pelvic floor physical therapy, we are looking at the whole person <clears throat> and the anatomy of the pelvic floor, uh, the pelvic floor musculature, it's kind of like a hammock or a sling of muscles that run from your pubic bone all the way back to your uh, coccyx. And so those muscles, they're there, there's multiple functions. Um, it serves to support the organs in that pelvic abdominal area. It serves as a sphincteric kind of function. So like the sphincters to help release um, feces and, and urine and control all of that sexual function. And so there's many, there's many functions of the pelvic floor muscles. And the pelvic floor muscles physiologically um, in a healthy pelvic floor are moving and responding to your diaphragm excursion. So one of the big things that we do is diaphragm um, retraining and wow. teaching patients how to breathe properly uh, because um, as you mentioned, uh, pain, right? And the nervous system, many times people who are in persistent pain states end up in a sympathetic overdrive. So the sympathetic nervous system is one of the, um, if we categorize it into sympathetic and parasympathetic in the central nervous system. So when you are in a long period of pain and you've been experiencing pain for a long time, you kind of get stuck in that state. And that state is also known as the fight or flight state. So um, what happens with that many times is our muscles end up tenser, um, for the pelvic floor specifically, we find, uh, people with endometriosis end up having, if they have the pain, um, even sometimes if they don't have high levels of pain, the pelvic floor muscles end up hypertonic oh. is a term that we use. Mm -hmm. So and can you explain that for, for those who don't know what hypertonic means? Yes. So hypertonic just means that, uh, the muscle resting state. So normally muscles are, have a normal, like resting, relaxed state, but when your muscles are hypertonic, it's almost as if they're constantly in a contraction and they're constantly being held tightly. So one of the things that we always start with is that diaphragm breathing because it's a natural way for you to tune in and try to facilitate that relaxation. Now, there are other neuromuscular things that we do. Neuromuscular just meaning 
um, brain body retraining with different cueing and imagery to train the pelvic floor to actively relax. We call that bearing down as well. Um, and that is something that's really helpful for patients who have hypertonic pelvic floor. But if someone is in a uh, chronic persistent pain state at our office, because we do other osteopathic techniques, many times we start with craniosacral therapy okay. or visceral manipulation, because if someone's nervous system is so upregulated, anything we're going to try to do exercise wise, manual therapy wise with the hands-on treatment won't be as effective. Mm -hmm. So getting someone's central nervous system into parasympathetic state, which is the rest and digest uh, state uh, is the first step. If someone is in that high pain state and what happens with people who are in a high pain state, um, they many times will have anxieties and different fears around the treatments too. So we refer a lot to psychotherapists um, for that psychologist because the treatment has to be multidisciplinary in order for someone to make that nice progression. So when we do get to the hands-on portion, there's multiple layers of your pelvic floor muscles. So that hammock actually has like multiple, it's like three hammocks stacked uh, together. And so uh, we can do some manual therapy externally, but then with permission and with consent um, of the patient with a gloved hand, we do uh, different internal muscle releases as well. Um, it can be first layer muscle tightness, and we do different hands-on techniques, just like other massage techniques that most people have experienced, but very specific for the muscles in the pelvic floor. And then we could be doing some deep uh, releases as well. Okay. That makes a lot of sense because like you said, there's so much wrapped up because when you're fighting pain, especially as we know, because endo just many times goes undiagnosed for seven to 10 years, if not more on an average, um, your body gets used to holding your, yourself tightly. Um, mm -hmm. so that would make sense to bring down, first of all, the anxieties around that, but also to get mm -hmm. the muscles to release and then have some pressure off. Um, what has been one of the most rewarding parts of your job? I think what I can say is giving patients the tools to feel empowered. You know, our, our goals as physical therapists are to, you know, help people, um, give them sub the support they need, provide them the specialized care, but then also give them the tools to feel empowered so that they understand their bodies and then they have tools for self-treatment, right? So uh, people who uh, come for pelvic floor physical therapy, we're teaching them home exercises as well. We're teaching them strategies. So I would say that's one of the most rewarding things. Uh, obviously people getting better and, and getting pain-free is um, another amazing thing that's rewarding, but um, everyone's journey takes a different amount of time. And so I would say just seeing people become empowered and understanding their bodies and feeling, um, being in their bodies is, is something that's really rewarding for me to see. Yes. Cause I do think there is a separation that happens when you have endometriosis, where you feel like your body is, is, I don't want to use the word against you, but you almost feel a disconnect between yeah. your body body and yourself because your body is continuing to cause pain and you almost fear the body that you're in. Yes. Um, so being able to have that alignment again, where everything is, this is my body. I feel safe in my body yes. um, is, is a very full circle, much needed moment in any kind of endometriosis, um, you know, as I say path, because we know it's chronic, we know that it doesn't easily go away that it mm -hmm. takes sometimes a, a multidisciplinary interdisciplinary approach mm -hmm. to handle this disease. So thank you for, for your yeah. commitment to those in the endo community for sharing your knowledge about it. I hope that you'll join us again soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Diana.